The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Disciples were on the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went ahead of them. They were amazed. Those who follow were afraid. Taking the twelve aside again, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him, spit upon him, scourge him, and put him to death. But after three days, he will rise. Then James and John, the son of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish for me to do? They asked him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, you do not know what you're asking. Can you drink the chalice that I should drink? Or be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? They said to him, we can. Jesus said to them, the chalice that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism in which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but it's for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, Do you know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles Lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. But the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel today, there's, it's quite a, a deep, and profound Gospel to really meditate on. And with it, the question, can you drink of the cup? And the fact that the answer is of the cup you will drink. Can I drink of it? I, at the same time, it is the cup that I'm asked to drink from. You will drink of it. But can you drink it? Can you drink of the cup? But you will drink it. It's almost like a sense of you will be asked to drink of this cup, but will you drink it to the last drop? Can you drink of it? Because you will. But is it freely? Is it drinking the whole cup to the last drop? Or is it, okay, just a little bit fighting, resisting? Can you drink of the cup? Let's go through the gospel. The first thing, uh, this is the gospel of Mark chapter 10. It says, the disciples were on the way. That's a very uh, Christian expression of who we are. We are on the way. Uh, secret password back in the days of persecution. You will ask someone, are you on the way? They say, oh, yeah, I'm on the way. Oh, so that's a Christian. Good. Uh, a way of getting to know who was a Christian and who not in the time of persecution was just those words, on the way. We are the people that are on the way, the way. Why? Because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. The disciples were on the way. They're on the right track. They were following Christ. So 
but they were going up to Jerusalem. Just those words means a lot. Geographically speaking, it, it is going up mountain. Jerusalem is set on a mountain, on high. So in a way, they were going to the place where eventually Christ would be crucified on the way to crucifixion. So following Christ up the mountain, up the hill, to be crucified. And Jesus went ahead of them. He is the head. We are his body. He is the one leading. We follow. And where he goes, we go. He went to the cross. He went to Jerusalem. He went up the mountain. So too we on the way. Now that's just chapter 10, Mark 10, verse 32. Just on the way, going up to Jerusalem, Jesus ahead of them. Just the three things you could really make a whole retreat from that line. And then the reaction of the apostles. Next verse. They were amazed. They were amazed. Amazed of what? They know that going to Jerusalem is going to, to where people don't like him, where he's going to be arrested, where he's going straight to the place that if you go there, you're not going to make it back. They were amazed at his courage, his determination. This is what I came here for, and this is what I'm going to fulfill. He's going up the mountain, all right? Are you sure? All right, we follow. We don't really want to, but they were amazed. Wow, he's really determined. This is, this is what needs to be done, and he, nothing is going to stop him. They were amazed. And it says, and those who follow were afraid. So he's leading full strength a whole crowd of people who were afraid. Have you ever tried leading someone, not just one person, but a group of people who are afraid? It's like herding cats. You just can't. If they're afraid, they won't move. Yet, he's leading them because his courage is an inspiration for them to follow. And then we know the rest of the story. Here, different from other uh, gospel narrations, from the Gospel of Mark, instead of the mother of James and John, uh, who who come to Jesus to ask for something here, it's a little bit more, uh, I don't know, because a mother asking for the two boys, well, you know, that's, well, that's a mother right there, you know, she's looking for the well-being of her sons, you know, uh, can my boy say that you're right and you're left, you know, come on. But here, it's, it's pretty, uh, what's the word? It would be quite bold, insulting maybe? Uh, that it would be the two sons, not the mother, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we want you to do something for us. But not just asking. They're telling him, you must give me this. This is the way they put it. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Really? Whatever you want. Okay. You know that prayer, be careful what you ask for, right? That's the type of thing that's happening here. Whatever we want, I want you to give it to us. And Okay, what is it you want? To sit at your right and your left. Ah, poor Jesus. I imagine him, ah. And he expresses it, he says it. You, you have no idea what you're asking. Don't you see I'm going up to Jerusalem? You want to see that my right and my left, do you not get it? What my right and left will be if we go all the way to Jerusalem? I thought the right and the left of my throne and the throne is the cross. Do you want to be at the right and at the left of my cross? Do you really know what you're asking for? And so the question, the question that is ours to meditate can you drink of the cup? Can you drink the chalice that I drink 
or be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized. Raise your hand if you're baptized. You do not know what you're getting yourself into. Or rather, our parents didn't know what we're getting ourselves into. Raise your hand if you come to daily Mass. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're about to receive the Holy Eucharist. Raise your hand if you're about to drink of the cup. Do you know what you're asking? Do you know what you're doing? By doing so, you are on the way up the mountain of Jerusalem. Die. To give your life. Not to be a leader that rules over people and makes their authority felt upon others, but to serve and to lay down your life for others. Can you drink of that cup? To put others before you, even to the point of giving your own life? As we pray for vocations, we were led first with an exercise, the exercise of freedom. The exercise was to be done by everyone. If God were to ask you to be a priest or religious right now, are you free to say yes? And then each one will have to come up with their reasons why they're not free and then work through each of those no's. And some of those no to be converted into a yes may imply offering your spouse. Can you drink of that cup? And you walk up Jerusalem and experience the death of a loved one for the sake of serving others. And it is important that we all do the exercise of freedom. Oh, well, I'm married at, well, let's not forget St. Rita. She was married with children. And she drank of the cup. And she drank this so as to give herself in service of many. And still today she's serving us. Can you drink of the cup? You will drink of the cup. You are already baptized in, into him. But can you drink it freely and all the way till the last drop? As a parish of St. Rita, it's important that we have that freedom to drink and to drink all the way so that if we are free, then we will be free to encourage our youth to likewise follow in our example as we walk on the way up the mountain to Jerusalem to give our lives for others, to give our lives for our own youth. Can you drink of this cup? You are here for daily mass. You're here to participate in the Holy Eucharist. Of this cup, you will drink. I pray that you drink it freely, you drink it fully, and you drink it for those who are called to serve, especially to be a source of inspiration for our youth to follow the way of Christ, to follow your example of life, and to have an abundant harvest of those who commit themselves from the youth to priest, and to religious life. Send Rita, pray for us.